Good morning. My name is Benoit Gauthier. I'm a research scientist for the Regional Ministry of Health Andalusia in Spain. I work in a research institute called Tebima, which is the Andalusian Center for Molecular Biology and Regenerative Medicine. And I have a group here doing research on uh, diabetes and autoimmune diseases. And when Ali initially joined my group, we were also interested in aging. So I will let then ha now Ali discuss about this particular project, which was quite exciting as this was a new field uh, for my research group. Hello, my name is Alejandro Martin Montalvo. I'm also a researcher at Cabimer, uh, working for the Foundation of Health and Development of the Andalusian government. And uh, yes, we, we have performed this project, uh, which is a uh, focus on to evaluate the role of thyroid hormones in health span and lifespan and having a, a deep view, I guess, on, on metabolism. So we came to this project because there was a gene, Pax8, that was uh, known to be expressed under certain metabolic circumstances in pancreatic islets. And we first initially investigated was what can Pax8 be doing in pancreatic islets. And we developed several lines of research within this topic uh, showing that uh, Pax8 um, is expressed during pregnancy in pancreatic islets and it's actually doing something. And uh, we believe that uh, we have demonstrated that uh, Pax8 uh, protects the, the islets under these challenging conditions. Uh, as you know, pregnancy is a, is a challenging condition for the pregnant mother. And this is part of, of what we have done. So another thing that Pax8 is doing is uh, controlling the production of thyroid hormones. So since thyroid hormones are also very important for metabolism and for health, we also thought that besides the role of Pax8 in pancreatic islets, it could be also doing via uh, thyroid function uh, effects. So, and this is why we came into this project where we evaluated whether changes in thyroid hormone levels could have uh, physiological relevances for health span and lifespan. And in order to do this project, what we did is to use the Pax8 homozygous mice, Pax8 heterozygous mice, and Walton mice treated or not with thyroid hormones. The aim of this project was to have a physiological condition of hypothyroidism severe and mild and then normal thyroid function, eothyroidism. And we evaluated the health span, the lifespan, and the metabolic health. So what we first uh, did is first initiate a longevity essay, and this actually, uh, we, all, we normally start with these projects with the longest experiment that we can do in the lab. We do a three-year experiment where we have the animals healthy, safe, in a cage, and we let them live as much as they can, and we monitor the health of these animals. And what we obtain is that severe hypothyroidism is almost lethal. So animals last two, three weeks. Then hyperthyroidism, when we treat animals with thyroid hormones, they have like twofold increase in thyroid hormones. They die around 50% of the normal lifespan of a mouse. And then we also evaluated a mild reduction of thyroid hormones. We're talking here about 10% reduction of thyroid hormones. And what we didn't observe is that these animals have a more or less normal lifespan, slightly shorter, but not statistically significant, but they develop metabolic deregulation. So these animals are obese, and these animals, when they die, they're prone to have a liver cancers. Actually, approximately, 50% of the animals died from or had a liver cancer in the necropsies. And this was actually one of the most surprising things, that we saw that just 10% reduction of thyroid hormones can lead to threefold increase on liver cancers. So we evaluated what was happening in the liver and many other tissues. We also evaluated the skeletal muscle, the white adipose tissue, and even the pancreatic islets. And what we observed is that uh, the liver uh, mitochondria in the liver are dysfunctional. 
they have problems, they generate, not in terms of production of energy, where we didn't detect any major effect, but they were prone to generate superoxide. And as you know, superoxide is a oxygen reactive species, species and it drives to accumulate gross damage, and that could be potentially contributing to these uh, carcinogenic events that we observe. That was for me one of the most striking or unexpected findings. So, for example, Benoit, I don't know if you want to, to say something uh, at this stage. I, I think you summarized it uh, quite well. Um... What is interesting is it's one of these projects that Ali developed in the lab because I was, you know, interested in Paxade and Islet. But then he came from the NIH on aging, and he said, "Benoit, let's let me let's let's try to do an aging with the thyroid." And, and for me, that was quite interesting because it led up to a new field uh, that he's now pursuing by himself. But for me, the most striking was that indeed, you know. In human, low levels of thyroids have, have been linked to longevity. Uh, the longest-lived Japanese uh, have long lit life, low levels of thyroid hormone. And yet what we find, what Ali finds, is that when, you know, you have low levels or mildly low levels of thyroid because of the Pax8 mutation, you are metabolically, let's say, impaired, and you have a greater chance of developing pancre of liver cancer, which is quite amazing. So this combined with the fact that we also previously or Ali published uh, another paper in diabetes uh, showing that indeed in, in human mutations in this Pax8 gene causes gestational diabetes. So in fact, this has become a major target, which we're actually very interested in pursuing because Pax8 not only causes in, in female gestational diet cancer, liver cancer. So it's, it's quite a hot topic and quite interesting. So um, this is uh, what I had to add to what Addy said. So actually, yes, I believe that, that I mean, we, we everybody knows that from the last century that fire hormones uh, have a, play a major role in health and even in longevity. But we are now trying to understand what they are actually controlling. And, and for example, we have developed some techniques or some uh, experiments showing that it has different effects on actually every single tissue controlling metabolism. For example, in pancreatic islet, we saw that they are rearranging the metabolism of pancreatic islet, and we have, for example, increases in the production and secretion of insulin, and actually the antioxidant defenses of pancreatic islet, which is quite limited per se, is even lower when you have a deregulation of thyroid hormones. And that was also another finding that was unexpected, and that we want even to continue studying because there were certain things that, that we saw that, that are not, we still don't understand, and, and they're quite surprising. For example, uh, the population of somatostatin uh, cells is increased under mild hypothyroidism. And we still don't know what's happening. We, we have to pursue this, and it's, it's very interesting. So, yes, we have developed research in different in metabolic tissues, and, and we believe that, that we should still investigate because there are many things that we still don't understand. And it's quite interesting to, to have a, a global idea of thyroid function. So just to add on to that, Ali, uh, it's true that, for example, um, we still don't know many things. And one of them is, for example, in the liver, when you did the proteomic, lipodomic approach, this is also something quite interesting because Ali took multi-omic approach. We did transcriptomic, so looking at the, at the genome level, at the transcriptome, transcript level, he looked at the proteomic level and then looked at lipidomic level, looking at lipids. And what he found basically is that in the liver, there's actually an increase in oleic acid. And historically, oleic acid has always been linked to as a good lipid. Okay, And what we see is that, in fact, it's increased in our animal model of hypothyroidism. And there are reports, in fact, linking oleic acid to liver cancer, but it's only association. There has been no real link. So this is also sort of a bomb because now what we're saying is that, well, in fact, well, lake acid is, is not good. It may actually be bad and that the ratio between palmitate and oleic acid and liver may be detrimental. So this is also another 
area that has opened, uh, Pandora's box, if you want, because we're going against the wave that oleic acid is the good, the good guy. Okay. Well, I, I, I would like. I think it's important that um, to say that this work was supported by the Ministry of Economy and Science, and more particularly the uh, Institut Carlos Tercero, which is the health branch of uh, this ministry who actually provided not only the funding for the research, but also the funding salary for Ali, which has been great because mm -hmm. I think, Ali, you can do it for me, but coming back from the NIH, also the Andalusian government. Okay, maybe you can describe a bit that. Okay, Ali? Yeah, well, actually, yes. Uh, we, we should acknowledge that health ministry or the regional health ministry of Andalusia has supported this research and also the government of Spain through the Instituto de Salud Carlos III, which is kind of the NIH of, of Spain, and also the Foundation of the Spanish Society of Diabetes through the ILED group has supported this research. And yes, every, everybody has contributed here, and this is uh, great that they have the support and also the support of the our research center, Cabimer to be able to perform this here in Andalusia, in, in Sevilla.